Bob, explain your experience. I like I'm being uh, swallowed. You feel like you're being swallowed? Yeah. Good morning, fishing freaks. I just crawled out of the back of my truck that had a queen size mattress on it. It was inflated. We're deflating it right now. Rob's still in there. The sun is, uh, is going to come up here in about 30 minutes and we're going to do some bass fishing today on the big old Sam Raven Reservoir. We survived the night and we're ready for day two bass fishing. We'll see you on the water guys. We're doing it. So a lot of you probably know this technique but I'm going to show it to you anyways. So we're in February. This is a classic pattern right here. You take a lipless crankbait. This is a 5 8 right here. I've got a uh, orange belly gold black back for overcast days. Question, should I throw black and blue or watermelon red? Oh. As of right now, that's a good question. Well, watermelon red is always good. Black and blue is good on overcast though. I've got a uh, seven, seven foot two medium heavy action rod for a good distance and the main thing is I got enough leverage to rip this thing out of the grass. There's a lot of shallow hydrilla out here. We're probably going to be fishing in two to five feet of water. I'm going to slowly crank it until I feel the grass and then I'm going to start ripping the bait, just pumping the rod. And that is when you get the bites. When you just pump right out of the grass, boom, they grab it. Dude, it is the right conditions for that weightless bait right now too. I'm ripping. I'm ripping. I'm going to stay ripping, dude. I'm going to just keep ripping. Okay, so we got water sim 61s, three degrees. God, I'm hooked on my bait on right now. Yep. I thought this was not oh, going to be one of those days. This started to be one of those. Dude, it's hooked on both. <sighs> Guys, this what isn't, I swear to you, this is not an act. What is going on? This, this, this happens way too much. It's so calm. I think I'm going to switch to a drum rig. Dude, I stopped the crank bit and like pulled back. Cut him out. There we go. Yeah, I had a bite on my crankbait. And Rob threw in there and it, and it caught him. I did. That's exactly what happened. Nice. There we go, dude. That's how we like to start the day off. So the first clue has been unlocked. Rob had a real shallow fish. Had that bite on that crankbait. He threw back in there and caught him. So could have been a male, you know, setting up pretty aggressive. So what I'm going to try to do here is throw a swim jig. I think they're really up there right now. And it's hard to get a lot of lures through that grass. So this swim jig, the head's designed to where it'll come through the, the grass easily. And I'm going to put a little twin tail flipper style trailer on the back. Here we go. Oh, 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 look at him, look at him, dude. Oh, no. God, that was shallow, guys. That was freaking shallow, he was coming. Dude, I wonder if you almost should have just paused it just for one instant for the second. I don't know. We'll That's probably... Things you can't take back, but sometimes you stop it, you it. Throw in there. I think he, he might have been like setting up, dude, like that last one. He's pretty aggressive. It's just like chasing it. Somebody's got to get a weightless on. You weightless on? I'm throwing on the edge. we throwing the edge of the stuff. All right. You want to throw weightless? Yeah, we got to get back in there, there's, dude. I, there's no question. It's too shallow. Here. This is crazy. They're doing it right now. I think we're in the right spot, bro. Dude, there's another one back there. All the way back there. You throwing away this, right? Yeah. Oh, get him. Yeah, you got him. oh, he came off. Dude, you about jerked the rod out of my hand, bro. Oh my god, he took everything. He just took half of it. Guys, we just found some shallow bed fish right now. They're moving up. Dude, he was aggressive. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, there's a bite. He's got it. Tiny. Tiny yeah, tiny. tiny. That, is a that is a buck bass. Okay. Well, Rackley got his skunk out of the boat, which is good with yeah. with a buck bass. They're up here doing it. But I think they're up there doing it, Jimmy. But I'm going to give you a serious tip right now. Serious tip. So this is a serious learning day. Yeah, it's a learning day. So I explained this in one of my other pond fishing videos the, the other day. But when the water's stained yeah. this time of year and like you you can't see the fish cruising, you're not sure if they're moving up or not. When you see those boils on the bank, yeah. that's when they start chasing those bluegill. That's when you know they're doing it. That's when they do having a giant orgy. Yeah, they, orgy. they just get like pissed off. They get aggressive. Just missed one right in here in this grass here. Pond weed. There he is. Got him. Yep. Little guy, little buck. Another buck. That is a buck if I see one. Another in here. The buck on the Cinco there, guys, on the edge of that grass. This could have been one I missed a second ago. No, no. They are back in there. Did you see that? God, dude. See there's it? another boil back. You just about where you threw it. There he is. You got him? Oh, he took my worm. Yep. Totally took my worm. Protecting something. He's definitely, yeah. So Rob just had two bites in there. I threw in there, got bit. That fish is definitely on the aggressive. Can't take it. Could be small, but you never know this time of year. There he is. Got him. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's shallow. Real shallow. Real shallow. Real shallow. Oh, get him out. Oh, there. Get him out. There we go. Wow, dude. They are up there. That was as long as I could cast. God, that makes you wonder if they're back on that flat right there. We're talking like probably six to eight inches of water right there, guys. They're doing it. So, for some of you newer LFG fans, I'll kind of shortly explain to you the, what goes down here. And I'll refer you back to some of the spawning videos. I did a, a series of spawning videos a few years ago that's really detailed on how the whole process works. But male bass, like the ones we're catching, come in first. They'll scout out areas. They'll make beds. Wait for the females to come in when the water temperature is just right. So me and Rob are literally watching this happen. Like yesterday, they were not up here. Today, they literally moved up overnight. And they're, they're starting to make beds and and get aggressive. So this is the first stages, man. This is an exciting time to be on the lake. Another little tiny buck. Just letting it sit there while I was moving the trolling motor. Golly, man, I just had a fish snatch my Cinco like it was a daggum cupcake at a birthday party. little isolated grass wads. There's another one. Got him. Who's running? Yeah. Okay. A little fatty. Is this a spot? No, it's, a, it's just a little butter ball. Butter My ball. gosh. God, that is a butter ball. Well, Rackley got his uh butter bean. They're on the slow the slow deal. You just can't roll into an area and cast around and okay. you, you gotta like know they're there or just grind it out. All right, lot, Rob's hooked up on a lipless finally. Has he got a better one? Uh, no, I think I just got a bunch of grass. I'm hoping. Yeah, he's a little buck. A little buck in some grass, though. So. Buck. Finally, a lipless fish. Finally. Yeah, it's the first one. Way back in there. Yeah, he's right here in the middle. New area, back of a creek, all the way back. We're hoping that the water temperature is going to be a little warm. What's it saying right now? 63? 
63? 63 is good. 63 is good. So we get up shallow, see if we can catch one. Crap. God. I knew we were going to have one of those heartbreaker moments. Well, guys, just broke off about a five pounder right in that patch of grass. He came up and jumped right when I hooked him. 25 pound test. That was a good one. Rigging the Cinco uh, Texas style with no weight, just so I can get it through that grass. That five aught hook, just like that, guys. I've caught probably eight or nine dinks. That was not a dink. Last two bites been shallow. Look at that bait fish. To the left. Way off to the left. Oh my gosh, he slammed it. A little bit of a Senko action there. Oh, Senko fish. There we go. Rob just had a bite and then I threw in there and got a bite. Weightless Senko on the other side of this bank. Yeah, all my line did was get heavy. God, that's a, that's a pretty fish, dude. Pretty fish. What do we got for water temp right now? 64 almost. Almost 64. That side looks good too. That side's got the creek. That side does No. Another male? Another male. Buck. Another buck bass. He's going though. He's fighting. Another one up shallow. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take off this eight ounce that I got on here. They're eating that Senko, dude. Yeah, they're too much on the They're like, there's no doubt. They just run with it. So there's I'm gonna take a time out here and show you guys the rig, since I haven't really explained it that well. I know you guys like the voiceover I did the other day and kind of explain things a little bit more. So throw on a Senko. That's that's a very common technique. This is a five inch Senko right here, watermelon red, five aught offset worm hook. Just no Texas rig weight, no bullet weight, just on its own. This bait has so much salt in it that it actually sinks pretty good. And the other thing I like about it is you can throw it a long ways, especially in windy conditions like this. And I've got a heavy fluorocarbon leader on here. This is 25 pound test fluorocarbon leader. I'm really surprised I broke off that five pounder with this, this line, but I've got 50 pound Power Pro main line and I'm throwing it on a medium heavy uh, power rod. So this is a seven foot two or seven foot one medium heavy power. So great setup for throwing this thing, setting the hook, but the fluorocarbon leader on here also helps the bait to sink. So having that up front, especially a heavy one, like 20, 25 pound test fluorocarbon, it's actually pretty dense. So it'll help the bait sink faster. If you're in a windy situation like this, that'll help. So the way I like to fish these is on braid because it's just so sensitive. I can feel those light bites and with a fluorocarbon leader. Sometimes I'll throw it on straight fluoro if I'm fishing really clear water, but we're down here in Texas, so braid and fluorocarbon is the way I like to go. Now, if you made it this far into the video, you're an official fishing freak, so I want to say thank you again for subscribing to the channel. 200,000 subs this week. Thank you guys very much. I'm gonna do a giveaway, so leave a comment down below. Say whatever you want. I'll pick, uh, pick a few comments, and we're gonna do an MTB giveaway. We're gonna give away three different uh, subscription packs um, and possibly some gear. So leave a comment down below and thanks for subbing. Another buck, another buck. He was kind of out of ways. Just slow. The, the Cinco was almost drifting. It's so windy here, guys. It's just like sailing through the waters. Got that Cinco tied on and the wind has just been like shifting directions. And it's picked up. The weatherman said it was going to be eight miles an hour. Rayburn, eight miles an hour, apparently is uh, like 20 miles an hour. So, thank you, weatherman, for that brilliant display of accuracy. I feel like it's been like four hours since we've caught a fish. It's been a while. It's been a long while. Thank God you just broke it up for us. Woo! There it is. 
that was a four hours of waiting right there. We ran around, we tried a bunch of different stuff, went back to the same old stuff, and there it was. Nothing new there, guys, just another Senko fish. We're gonna head in. It's getting towards the end of the day here. The only thing we can catch fish on is Senkos. It's been just a, a Senko fest. So, uh, me and Rob are gonna head in. We're gonna cook something, I guess. We got, I brought a grill. I'm not sure what we're gonna, gonna eat. Um, maybe make a fire. It's cold now. What the heck is going on with Texas weather? What the crap? Texas weather is so strange. It was literally like 80 degrees. Now it's like 50 degrees. It was calm. Now it's really blowing. It's really getting chilly right now. So see you back on land. Alrighty, we are back. And guess what? We're not sitting in the back of a truck bed right now or at a campfire. Thought we'd give you a little something different here. I'm standing in a uh, in a tackle store. Shane was nice enough to uh, to let us stay here for the for the night. He felt bad for two dudes having a, two grown men sleeping in the back of a truck together. So he said, here you go, stay here. Get all your tackle ready. Why not stay in a giant tackle store? That's the best place to do tackle prep for tomorrow morning. So you know what guys, today was a small fish day, um, but we figured out a little bit more of the puzzle tomorrow. We really don't care about numbers. We're just going after hogs. We're gonna try to slow down, just fish deeper if we have to. We're just not trying to find those buck bass again, even though that was fun today. I hope you guys learned something on that, but uh, tomorrow's hog day. So stay tuned for the next one and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> I might just leave that in.